Yo, yo, welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com. I am the owner of No DQ and Rift, here to answer your questions about the world of wrestling. So let's get right down to it. Hey Aaron, love the show. Please answer this on a video. Do you think Wade Barrett could work as a face? I know it would seem weird, but I think it could work. Here's the thing about Wade Barrett. We have not seen him play a babyface role yet. So it's really hard to say how he would do. I think right now he has a ton of momentum as a heel. He just took out Randy Orton a few weeks ago. Now perhaps six months down the line, maybe a year down the line, if the tide changes and the fans start to get behind Barrett, I mean, that would be a good time to turn him face. Also, you have to take into consideration um, injuries. Maybe if there's uh, too many top baby faces injured, maybe if Randy Orton gets hurt and Sheamus gets hurt at the same time, and you, you need a top baby face, you have Wade Barrett there to play the role. So, I mean, that could be a factor. But um, for now, I just don't see it happening. I think that um, he's doing really well as a heel, and I, I expect him to continue in that fashion at least for the next several months. Do you see any surprise entrances at this year's Royal Rumble? Well, when you talk about surprise entrances, are you talking about like a Booker T or Kevin Nash type surprise? If that's the case, I think it's unlikely. First of all, you don't even have that many free agents that um, could, could fill that role as the big time surprise. I mean, you have Brock Lesnar, but he's still with UFC at the moment, um, still under contract. You have Batista, but I mean... I think that's unlikely that Batista will be there. That's just my opinion. But maybe a, a, a mid-level surprise. Maybe somebody like Road Dog could be in the Royal Rumble since he's with the company right now. Um, but other than that, I think the, the best we're going to get in terms of surprises is maybe Christian returning. Um, perhaps WWE will not announce Randy Orton's return and have him come back at the Rumble as a surprise. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But... Um, Beyond that, I don't really see a whole lot of surprises. Now, I love the surprises. I, I think WWE should do the surprises more often. I remember 2002 when um, Mr. Perfect, they announced, they announced these returns in advance. Mr. Perfect, Goldust, The Godfather. And um, I, th I thought it was awesome. I thought it made the Rumble match seem like a much bigger deal when all these names from the past were coming back to try to um, have one more big moment at WrestleMania. So I would like to see it, see it happen more often. Definitely. Hey Aaron, what do you think is the single biggest rivalry between wrestlers? You said Austin versus Vince was the biggest, but between two wrestlers, what was the best? I think probably Kane versus The Undertaker or Austin versus The Rock. Austin versus The Rock is definitely at the top, and um, I think mild time personal favorite would be Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart, just because the lines were blurred between reality and fiction, and... Um, you really felt like those two guys hated each other, and uh, behind the scenes, they did at, at one point. Um, but yeah, I mean, Austin, the in terms of pure storyline, uh, where the guys, you know, behind the scenes got along perfectly fine, I would say Austin versus The Rock was just uh, one of the best feuds in WWE history. I mean, they had um, three, you know, all-time classic WrestleMania matches, and um, just great stuff. Hey Aaron, big fan of No DQ, my favorite wrestling site. Thank you for that. Anyway, I was just wondering, what was your personal highlight of the PG era so far? Like, what moment do you remember where you thought it was well booked, well wrestled, etc.? Well, in terms of um, the best match, obviously uh, Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker WrestleMania 25. Now, in terms of uh, a, a long-term storyline, I'd have to say Shawn Michaels versus Jericho in 2008. And that was right after the PG era started. I think, actually, it might have started right before the PG era began officially because um, I think uh, there was um, Shawn Michaels uh, bladed in the feud with Jericho. I, um, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think it was like uh, Great American Bash or something, but it was right around when the company was transitioning into the PG era. But there are so many classic moments with Michaels and Jericho, and uh, I mean, that was an awesome feud. Just... Uh, that really sums it up. There's not more, much more you can say about it. Now that Jack Swagger has captured the U.S. title, do you think Dolph Ziggler will win the WWE Championship at Royal Rumble so that Vicky Guerrero's stable will have both of Raw's major titles? I don't think that Dolph Ziggler will be WWE Champion. I think it's too soon for him to be champion. I do think he has one of the biggest upsides of anybody on the WWE roster, but I think that it would be better to uh, continue building him up over the next year before uh, putting the title on him. 
That's just my opinion. And, um, you know, I think it would be cool to see uh, Ziggler and, and Swagger with both titles, but the fact of the matter is the U.S. title really means nothing right now. So uh, ha making Dolph Ziggler the WWE champion just to say that both him and Swagger are champions simultaneously, I don't think it would really be all that effective right now. I think it would be better if the U.S. title was built up more and uh, you build up Ziggler more, and then when they both win together, then it means something. But for now, I mean, I don't really think anybody would care all that much, to be honest with you. In Chris Jericho's new book, he says that his title match with Triple H at WrestleMania 18 for the Undisputed Championship was a terrible match because of all the momentum from the audience had been used on Hogan Rock. Do you agree? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say it was a terrible match. I mean, it was a fine match, but yeah, it, it was uh, definitely the wrong decision to put um, Triple H and Chris Jericho ahead of Hulk Hogan versus Rock on the pay-per-view. Just uh, wasn't a good idea, and um, I'm sure at the time they thought that... that um, I don't really think that they expected the kind of reaction that Hogan got. I mean, they knew that he would probably get a good reaction because they were in Toronto, but I think everybody was uh, taken back a little bit by just how over Hogan was. And, um, yeah, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and... Uh, yeah, after Hogan and Rock, the crowd was just completely spent. I mean, they had invested all their emotion into that match, and they were just tired. And I'm sure if uh, Hogan and Rock wasn't on the card, the, the crowd probably would have been a lot more into Triple H and Jericho. I don't think it had anything to, to do with those two guys. I just think it was the positioning of the match, and the crowd just had no more energy after the Hogan-Rock match. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of No dq &A Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Make sure you leave a comment at youtube.com slash no DQCW. Let me know what you think of the video. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, please keep subscribing. Please keep spreading the word. And on that note, we'll see you next time.